Yeah, hello everyone and welcome to another random gameplay chess! Is this considered a video game? Well, I guess kind of it is. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's digital. I don't know. <laughs> there are a bunch of aspects to digital chess that are more video game-like than it is uh, uh, regular chess in some aspects. I mean, it is still chess, of course, but the thing about it is that you can do stuff like pre-moves and uh, you can move faster than you would if you're hitting the clock or something like that, etc., etc., etc. So, yeah, I'd say it's, it's, it's got the video game traits that separate it from regular chess. But anyway, so at chess.com here, there's this, there's this guy named Nelson here, and he tends to be the killer of players trying to advance <laughs> Do things here, so I thought that would that would make for an interesting match. I mean, I I have beaten uh, Antonio without any hints. Haven't been able to beat Isabel without any hints or takebacks. Well, I should say I only did did takebacks with Isabel, but yeah. So I, I guess I'm around like maybe 1500, 1550 or something like that. But anyway, let's do Nelson as I was saying. And I got the camera above me, so it's it's gonna look like that I'm looking down a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> Should be fine. I'm gonna challenge and I'm gonna play as black just to give him maximum advantage because you see he's got this thing well not maximum advantage I should say because he's got this thing that he's he's a very aggressive attacker and that's what throws people off. He's a he's a queen attacker dealio, especially in the early game. So I'm gonna go for that and let's begin. And I am really happy to see uh chess getting a whole bunch of uh, notori notoriety, I guess you could say, you know, in uh, in that people are picking it up lately because it's it's like of all the classic board games, this is by far one of the best ones. And by the way, he's going for the uh, scholar's mate, as you may have may have noticed here. You see, he's gonna go for the queen attack over here. Uh huh. So. <laughs> so to counter that, I'm just going to go over here um, to. To kind of give you an idea of how the pieces move, pawns can only move in straight lines unless they're taking, of which they take diagonally. Uh, the knights move in like little L-shaped patterns such as that. Bishops go diagonally. Queens move in any direction as long as it's straight. That was a terrible, terrible arrow. It's more like <laughs> diagonals and straight lines, like in any direction, as many spaces as you want. Rooks are only in straight lines, and the king is any direction but only in one square. The objective is to checkmate the king so that, it, you know, it, the, uh, the thing is that you want to get it so the king cannot escape being taken on the next turn, and that's called checkmate, because everything else, I guess you could say, technically doesn't matter to that, aside from the checkmate. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about protecting the king, although, you know, the rest of the stuff does matter because you've got to take pieces in order to do stuff, and yeah. Uh, in order to take pieces, you move pieces into the space that another piece is occupying, and yeah, it's, it's not like checkers where you jump pieces or something like that, so... Anyway, um... <laughs> I drew 800 arrows on the board, and they mean absolutely nothing, because all I wanted to do was... <laughs> <laughs> Just show you how the pieces move. I'm gonna do well. You know what? Maybe, maybe. Let's trade queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> he might try. Well, I guess he might try and go for that pawn. Maybe. Might be. I don't. Hmm. So I can't take the pawn. I mean, I can't take it back with the king because otherwise the knight will take my king. You know, you, you can't. Basically, the king never gets taken in the game, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just, just gonna try and think my way through things, if at all possible. As a matter of fact, um, I think I'm gonna go here to guard this square. <clears throat> and that, moving the knights to the outer edges aren't, aren't typically the best moves. You wanna occupy the, the center squares, if at all possible. Uh, but that's just general strategy, I guess you could say. Uh, but yeah, of all the classic board games, super, super happy to see chess gaining traction again, because chess is, like of all the classic board games, I'd say is my favorite of the bunch. Um, let's go... Like, I don't want to put the bishop here, he'll just advance the pawns and just 
just mess with me. Uh, I could probably get away with putting the bishop over here. Well, because as I said, I'm trying to occupy the center squares. Uh, you can do that, I guess. It's not really super important to do so. I'm going to do that. If you'd like to take the bishop, you can. Go ahead. I'll just take that back. And I know that the pawns are now um, in a vertical column like this, which isn't ideal either, because you want the pawns to be side by side rather than spaced out like this one, or uh, in, in a row like this one, yes. But, you know, it's just, just how things sometimes roll with the game. You can't always get perfect planning and like. Um, I wonder if I should castle. Castling is a special move where the king moves two spaces to one side and then the rook goes in front of it. Uh, but the thing about it is that you can't castle if the king has moved, or and you can't castle if uh, the castling is done with a rook that has already moved. So in this case I can castle in either direction, but you can't castle if there is a piece over here. So if I move the bishop somewhere else, then I can castle in this direction, but I think I'm better off castling in this direction. Well, although, the bishop could act as an extra pawn. You normally want a castle on the short side, but that's not always uh, always the best move, depending on how you need to move your pieces, or how you want to get pieces out and stuff like that. Um, if you want to take my knight, I guess it's not a big deal. That's how castling works. And, uh, I'm going to do that, huh? Uh, <laughs> let's see... So, the, obviously, it's it's very strategic game, no luck involved, and, uh, you know, it's a lot of thinking, because there's a lot of pieces on the board at the time, 32 at max, so, <laughs> lots and lots of stuff to go through. Um, 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 and also, you don't want to leave pieces hanging. Uh, a hanging piece is basically a piece that the opponent can take freely, like, if I, if I didn't have my knight here to guard this, this pawn here, this bishop could go and grab the pawn without any sort of issue, so... Yeah, let's, let's, you know, let's, let's, let's not do that sort of thing, shall we? <laughs> if we can help it. Um... You know, I could do something nasty here. If I were to move my knight over here, and then over here, like you go here, and you go over here, that would fork the rook and the king, and then I'd be able to get the rook. Because you see, the rook is a very powerful piece. The bishop and the knight are about the same in power, but the queen is uh, queen and the rooks are the top pieces. Rooks are second in line and top pieces. Uh, queen is tippy top. Well, I guess technically the king is the most important piece, but you know it's <laughs> it's infinitely important. I guess you could say. So, if I were to plop the knight over there, he'll have to move the bishop back here to guard that square, otherwise I'm just going to get that bishop free. I don't know if he'll see that though, but I would like to advance my uh, knight if at all possible. Oh, well, I guess that... <laughs> so, uh, uh, ooh, well, I guess that works too. I mean, you know, that sort of trade. Uh, but yeah, Nelson is a pretty aggressive attacker, Delio. See, now if I move this over there, the knight is now going to go and attack my knight. And with the knights being more powerful than pawns, it's not an even trade. So that's another factor to take into account. And he's probably going to try backing off my uh, knight soon by, by moving this pawn up to, up to uh, c3. So I probably don't want to keep it there. I mean, I could, because it'll probably burn a move for him. And then I could set up other things, maybe. Uh, I just, I kind of want to get my rooks more into the game, but I don't know if I... Because everything's kind of clogged. <laughs> mm. What if I went... So I kind of want to make sure that knight doesn't go in advance, too, but I don't know if I can prevent that. Uh... Because, you know, his, his pieces are mostly clogged up as well, so I'm just trying to maintain board position slash advantage, I guess you could say. Uh, let's go... I guess bring the knight back. <laughs> yeah. I guess I could 
do the trade there, because I can start checking the king. Uh, I, have, I haven't gone into what checks are in the game yet, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. You can eat this piece if you like. Oh, you're not. <laughs> okay, see, if maybe you, re you realize not not that good of idea to let me do that. Um, so if I were to check the king, which means attack the king with some sort of piece, like, like if the king was still over here, and I moved my rook here or this rook here to take an attack on the king after this pawn attacked my pawn and cleared the column, that means that uh, he would have had no choice but to move the king or block it. But he did. He had no other piece to block over here at this moment, so he would have had to move the king probably to one of these two squares because it's more towards the outside where it's harder to attack. Uh, he could move there, I guess, and just kind of guard with pawns and stuff like that, and maybe the bishop. But I don't think it would have been as good as going and move the king's over, uh, the king over to this square uh, or this column area, I should say. But anyway, that that didn't happen anyway. I'm just trying to explain some strategy here. Um. Well, if I attack that, I'll get a free pawn. I should say a free extra pawn. I don't think it's that important that I have that pawn in that position. Um, another thing about pawns is that if you manage to advance the pawn all the way to the end, you can trade it in for any sort of power piece that you want. Rook, bishop, uh, queen, you know, basically anything except for the king. Because, you know, there can only be one king at, at the time, so what, what you'd always want to do is go for the queen, you know? <laughs> Every so often, uh, mate turning it into a knight is most useful, but y you usually want to go for a queen, as that's just typically safest. Um, 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 like, I can easily get this pawn back by just bringing up another pawn or something like that, but I'm just trying to think more ahead here. Uh, that pawn is currently being guarded by the bishop, so I can't just outright attack it with a power piece like a, a rook or something like that, because otherwise, yeah, it'll just be sad face for me. Uh, hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking I should... Maybe... See if I can advance this rook into some sort of like king attacking position, like maybe over here if at all possible, because then I can uh, potentially re attack the bishop in the future if he wants to bring the rook down into here, or something like that, or bring these rooks out or something. Maybe, I'm not sure just yet, but I'm just kind of thinking things through. I think what I might do is put this pawn over here to clog things up, because then, uh, things... yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> you can advance that, that pawn there if you'd like to, but I'm more interested in uh, some middle game or middle ground board presence here. Uh, that's kind of a sneaky move because now if I attack that, uh-huh, yep, yep, so I can't just outright take that otherwise he'll get a free dealio there, so... I am probably better off flip-flopping the knights over to here. Yeah, you can eat that if you'd like. I'm not super interested in taking that back right now, though. Um, I mean, I guess you can if you want to. I mean, what's going to happen is if I, if I take it back here, you're just going to take it back with the rook, and then the rook will be in pretty good position. But I have my own my own rook to do things here as well, and it may actually be a bad idea for him to put the rook there, because I can go up all the way and attack the king with uh, check, but I'm not sure how useful that is, because uh, attacking the... Uh... Yeah, well, actually, that would be pretty useful, because that would be mate, because my knight's got that square, and knight's got that squ square, moving that all... yeah! Um... So go ahead, take my pawn back. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, sad face. <laughs> he recognized that. Uh, so I don't want to let my rook get taken here. It's a very powerful piece, as you know. So I'm gonna plop that over here. So then I got so I can open up that column to uh, this here when I move the king away later. Just kind of a future planning dealio. Okay, so as long as I have my rook here, this rook cannot move basically because this is not. 
going to be able to guard anything here. I mean, I, I guess if it ends up here, it's, eh, I mean, I, I'd then just be able to attack it with the knight instead, and yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> I think what I might be better off doing now that I can advance stuff is moving my knight over there. Uh, you know what, sure, fine, I'll try it with you. <clears throat> I know that'll free up hit... Really? <laughs> I was gonna say, I know that's gonna free up his rook to attack over here, or like down this, this whole column, but... Pardon me? That just seemed like, uh... That seems like a flub, if you ask me. I mean... It, I, I mean, I could back off my knight to... Here, here, yeah... Is it... That, do you want that pawn that much? That you want... <laughs> that you, you want to go like that? But then if I move it here, and then I move my knight here, I'd get this pawn back anyway. And I don't think you're getting much advantage if you put your bishop over there. So I'm going to put knight over there. You might want to fork the knight, so that's why he's going here. But I'm going to go plop here. <clears throat> okay... And that is a pretty big mistake, I think, because I'll be able to take this rook now. Um, I don't, I don't think he has any checkmate patterns. Uh, like if, like if I decide to take this rook, does it matter if I take that rook? Like, do I need that knight for something? I don't think there's anything that he can checkmate me with here. Why did I do that? Why did I right-click? I'm just gonna take it. Alright. Yeah. Is he giving up? <laughs> like, now I can just start trading pieces, you know, at, at this point, because I'm, I'm up ahead. Eight in material, see that down here over? Yeah. Up and eight, so I can just kinda do whatever, basically. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll trade, you can take my knight. There you go. Happy days for you, I guess. Uh, I, I guess I'll try and get my knight out of there. Wait, actually... Hold on a sec. What if I bring my knight up over to here to attack the king so it's forced to either move over here or this rook goes up here, in which case if the rook goes there I'll just trade rook uh, rooks over there, and I'm still up quite a bit. I don't think it matters, because the, the rook cannot check my king, because it's being blocked by the pawn. You cannot move in the same space as your own pieces, basically. You cannot take your own pieces! Um, pop that there. Okay, so you're gonna do the trade. It's fine with me. So yeah, now he's, uh, he's... He's in rough shape. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I'm gonna move my knight down over here to block the advancement of this pawn. And, uh, I'm gonna actually... Maybe what I should do... Maybe I should have put that there in, in place to prevent the king from continually shifting over that way. Uh, maybe I blundered slightly there. Although... Um... Wait, 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 wait. I mean, he's, he's going for the knight, that's for sure. Because I, I've got this square occupied, so he can't advance that pawn, and it's also blocking this pawn. Because pawns can't take forward, you know, they have to take diagonally. Um, I could advance a pawn twice over. Yeah, like if I advance this pawn all the way over here, that guards the knight, and then I can just go and... Uh, Plop the, the rook over here, discards that, yada yada yada. <clears throat> Puts my king in check. Now see that because my king is in check, I cannot do anything but move my king. Look at it, look, look at this, look. Look look at this. See, no, uh-uh, uh-uh. That that's how check works, so. <laughs> but I'm just gonna wait, wait, actually wait, before I before I do that. Is is the king in a rocky position? I don't think so. Because he might be trying to force a stalemate, which is basically um, when the king cannot move, but it has to make a move. And it, if it makes a move, it'll be in danger of being taken on the next move. That's a stalemate. Or a stalemate can happen if you, if it gets repetitive, like multiple moves at once and stuff like that. But anyway, um, let's go... 
move that pawn up two. Yeah, pawns can move two squares up on the first move. And because this is guarding in these directions, the only way he'd be able to get out of that is if he could use some other pawn to... Yeah, because this is guarding this, this is guarding this, this is guarding this. And yeah, so even if you tried to go take the, the rook by going diagonally into it, it's going to be... It's gonna be t uh, guarded by the pawn, so really, I could just kind of just keep advancing stuff. Uh, I don't even have to. I'm gonna go put the king over there and advance that pawn. Uh, well, they let the king move back over there. I could go eat this. <coughs> and you're, you're not getting anywhere with that. I'm, I'm telling you, you're not getting anywhere. Um. I'm just trying to look for checkmate here with what I've got, but I might not have anything at the moment. Maybe I'll just eat this pawn and call it a day, because he's, he's still kind of stuck with stuck with things in general. While I think about things. Um, num, 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 num. I guess it doesn't matter if I move my knight now, because then, you know, if he tries to advance the pawn there or there, I'll still be able to take with my pawn. There's a move called En Passant, is if, if the opponent moves the pawn past the pawn that you have here after it does a, a second, you know, a, a two-move type move on the first pawn move, you can still take it by a diagonal take like that. Uh, that's it's a it's a little known move, I guess you could say. I mean, you know, people do it. That does know. I mean, people do know the move, but I mean, it's not it's not a typical move that people recognize. So. Uh, so it's not really going to get anywhere. I could also just take it back with the king if it moves up as well, so... I think what I'll do then is... Clog up the king from moving past this... Past this row here. Go all the way over, eat that. <clears throat> now you are very stuck. Here's where the pre-moves come... Actually, wait, 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 poop, 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 poop. Oh wait, act oh, let me. I was going to say that's where the pre-moves come in, that I was going to say with the, uh... Um, because you can move things ahead of time, but I just realized I can't do that because if the king moved over, over to here, it would be able to, <laughs> be able to take that, and then when I move my pawn over here, promote it to a queen, it would be, you know, the king would be over here, and then it would be able to go and attack the, my newly made queen, but since he didn't do that, it's like he's giving up here, I'm gonna move my pawn up, go queen, that's checkmate. Oh, and that is how you beat Nelson, I, I guess you could say. <laughs> he doesn't play the same way every time, but I, I just thought I would go over the, like, the logic of the game and stuff like that so that you get an idea of how to advance in your game if you play chess and stuff like that. Because chess is a very complicated board game, so it's, it's easy to miss a whole lot of stuff. I miss things a lot, and yeah, see, I'm, I even had a blunder somewhere in there, and yeah. <laughs> I, I, and... You know, it's just, there's so many things to keep track of, sometimes it happens. <laughs> so with that, I'm going to end off the video here. I hope you enjoy, and I will see you in the next video.